Hello and welcome to Otten Math. In this edition of Otten Math, we're going to talk about infinite geometric series and explain how to figure out the sum of an infinite geometric series. So if you recall, we talked about uh, arithmetic series. In an arithmetic series, we'll just take an example. I have something that looks like 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7 plus 9, where my common difference is constant. That common difference is 2. Now we can see that if I keep on adding a value to each of the terms in the sequence, that my series is going to end up being infinite. It will never, it'll never stop, and it can't be defined as a particular sum. In a geometric series, for example, we have also, let's say, 1, 3, 9, 27, 81, and on and on and on, where my common ratio, my constant ratio is 3, I have 3 to 1, 3 to 1, 27 to 9 is 3 to 1, 81 to 27 is 3 to 1. And as I continue to add these together, I again come up with a value of infinity. So the time where an infinite geometric series can have a finite sum is where the constant ratio, the absolute value of the constant ratio, is going to be less than 1. So for example, if I have 1 plus 1 half plus 1 fourth plus 1 eighth plus 1 sixteenth and so on and so forth, I'm going to end up with, as I go to infinity with all these terms, with a number or a value that is finite. Because you can see these values are getting smaller and smaller and smaller. They're getting closer to zero. They're not getting larger and larger and larger and continuing to expand. They're actually shrinking to a point where they can't go beyond a particular value as a sum. So when we talk about infinite geometric series and a finite value, we're talking about the instance where the, in this case, the common ratio is 1 half over 1 or 1 half. Common ratio is 1 half where the ratio, the absolute value of the ratio, is going to be less than 1. Okay? So let's talk about infinite geometric series. First, we want to talk about partial sums. And a partial sum is just a partial sum of a geometric series. So we talked about, in this case, we have a partial sum. And the partial sum would just be whatever number of terms you want to define, and you'd add those together. So in this case, a partial sum of this geometric series would be 1, 1 half, plus 1 fourth, plus 1 eighth, plus 1 sixteenth, and we can stop it right there. We can also say the partial sum of this geometric series is 1 plus 3, plus 9, plus 27, plus 81, and stop it there. So partial sum is just part of a sum of an infinite geometric series, not the entire sum. So partial sum is the first n terms of an infin infinite geometric series. The sum of an infinite arithmetic series, as we explained before, was infinite, right? If I have 1, my common difference is 2 or any value, I'm going to continue to add larger and larger numbers, and so my value of my sum is going to be infinite. An infinite geometric series can have a finite value, again, assuming that the constant ratio, the absolute value of the constant ratio is going to be less than 1. So your rule for the infinite geometric series is going to be the sum of the series is equal to the first term over 1 minus the common ratio. Okay, so let's go back to our example here. If we want to find out what the sum of this sequence is, this infinite geometric sequence, we say that the sum is equal to a sub 1, which is 1, over 1 minus r, the common ratio is 1 half, 1 minus 1 half. So I have 1 over 1 half, and so my answer is 2. So if you add all of the terms, an infinite number of terms, in this sequence, you will come up with a value of 2. Let's take one more example. Let's say that we have a value of 6, 3, 1.5, 0.75. So a sub 1 is going to be 6. My common ratio is 1 half. And I end up with 6 over 1 half, which is equal to 12. 